Hey, Scrapbook friends, it's Nicole, and I am super excited for this video and the next three videos that will be coming to you on my channel. Uh, there might be one in between that's a new product video, but um, these are the family, uh, family reunion albums that I've been working on for the last several months. This has been my big project. I was working on that, and then I took a break to do the album for my nephew that I shared a couple weeks ago, um, and now I'm co almost completely done with these family albums. I have permission from my siblings to share the pictures because, of course, my nieces and nephews, my parents and stuff are in there. Um, we have a family reunion every three years, and my goal is to get those family reunion albums done before the next reunion, and we leave in five days for the next reunion. And so I've got these four, this four volume album done. Um, and I'm super excited to share it with you. I hope that you will enjoy looking at it. I love the feedback that I get from you about my album flip throughs. I'm excited about this one because this is the most recent uh, album project I finished. Like I finished it, you know, June 30th or something like that. So it's a lot of newer product and a lot of my current style of scrapbooking and I just hope that you're gonna love it. Okay so I'm gonna switch the overhead camera and put the album out and we're gonna get going. All right here we go with my reunion album volume one. Um, my maiden name was Smith and so our family nickname is the Smith fam um, and so just for my custom spines um, I chose to use Smith Fam Reunion 2018 Volume 1. My little spine's a little crooked here. Um, I love, love the custom spines from CM. Um, this font is called Mouse Memoirs. I use it in the biggest size that they have, which is a 92. There are about 20 fonts that you can choose from. Um, I don't know what this one is. This is whatever like the default font is that I put here at the bottom. But I love being able to adjust... Um, I have different fonts for different topics. And so all of these are this Mouse Memoirs font in silver foil. Uh, the, the album cover has blue foil, but I feel like that went pretty well with the silver. So this album was Electric Summer. This came out, I think it was last summer, 2020. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, I've got to find a way to use this album. And I thought, how perfect to use it for our family, re family reunion albums, which... Uh, we held our family reunion at a lake in Georgia. So here we go. Um, my sister always likes us to come up with the hashtag to use when we share our pictures on social media. And somehow we came up with Smith Fam in Georgia and we came up with Smorgia. So that gives you a little hint of kind of what kind of family we are that we come up with wacky hashtags. For all four albums, I did a very similar title page. I used the same font, the same layout, different pictures, but this gave me a chance to use a little bit of the Electric Summer paper that I had left. I went through several packs of that paper, which I loved. Um, I did change the colors, kind of the color schemes, and of course the different numbers, but you'll see this again in the other albums as we go through this four video cycle. One of the things that I did in this album that I don't always do um, is a lot of layered titles. As you know, when you've watched my albums, a lot of times I just have words. Uh, this time I started with some titles that I purchased from, I call her the title lady. Her name's Kathy Kane and she sells her titles through, I think her Facebook page is called Just Add Photos, but she's come to a couple of my retreats. And of course I purchased some pre-made titles from her, but as I got going with the album, I realized that having a few titles that were fancy kind of really jumped out against the ones that weren't quite as fancy. So the titling for this album took me longer than I'm used to because I did kind of create my own titles. I got a lot of my artwork from Miss Kate Cuttables. She sells SVG files that you can import into your Cricut or your Silhouette or whatever cutting um, device that you have. And But I had to break them apart and create my own titles. It was very, very time consuming. Um, that is not something I can teach you. It took me hours of watching YouTube videos and lots of trial and error. Maybe someday in the future I'll be able to teach it, but not right now. Um, I think that the paper that I used here, this is just the rental house that we rented. 
Um, you can look it up, Da Casa Banana 2. It was through VRBO. It's in, um, oh, somewhere Georgia, off of I-20, east of Atlanta. Um, and this paper pack was a promo paper pack. I want to say it might be Heart and Soul. Uh, that was a free paper pack a couple of years ago. I don't really like this paper. Uh, it's a little bit bland for me. Um, and I, I don't know, I, it just hasn't been my favorite. But that made it really good for layouts that were just of a house, right? I just wanted something pretty, pretty simple. And I've used it a few other times in these books, and I will mention it, I'm sure, to you. Um, and I, I like being able to find a way to use even paper that at first glance, I don't necessarily like. Oh, I also made these tiny little border strips just by using the scallop edge blade on my 12 inch trimmer. I often forget to use those decorative blades. And so I'm always kind of proud of myself when I do, um, when I do remember that. So here's some more paper from that pack. And these are just pictures of the house. You can see very, very simple. I actually used um, the scrap piece that was like the negative side of the scallop. So you see the, the first side, the scallops kind of swoop down. And then this side was the negative side. So I didn't have to waste that. And these are just pictures of the rooms in the rental house. I think this was our room. I don't know that my sister who assigned the rooms chose it because this was the Alabama room, but we liked it. It had two queen size beds. So our kids shared with us and um, or our son did and we had our own bathroom it makes it really nice in a family reunion with you know 40 people to have a space that's just yours that you can go and escape to so this album i didn't really attempt to do chronologically because i just had so many pictures there were whole bunches of us taking pictures i think i ended up printing like over 2,000 pictures i didn't use all of them so i just kind of did the album the, the pages kind of tried to do start to finish but mostly it's just by theme so we kind of start after the house the first thing i have is this frog float um my brother had seen these at costco near his home he lives out in the west and they were flying so he asked me to go to costco and check and they were on clearance for 14.99 so i bought two of these frog floats and we brought them and the house had a pool and we played a lot with that um this is the electric summer background the little beach balls and rings this is the lamplight chain border maker cartridge and then the frog could be miss kate um, i found it online and then i put the title on um, over the top so these are uh, titles that are or artwork and titles that i did cut myself mostly um but a lot of the artwork i got other places this page i really love this was one of the first titles i created myself because i was going kind of in order and the background paper is the fresh fusion fast to fab paper that I think was from a promo from last summer. Um, so the background already had the little diamond shape on one triangle and the red on the other. And then I used one of their layered borders and I created this um, title just by going on Google images and finding a silhouette of a red solo cup. And I put this ready to party. This was not that kind of a party. This was our family reunion. But look at all these red cups. And this that was, you know, we, we were really good. To everybody wrote their name on a cup. And we used the same cup pretty much the whole time um, to kind of try and, you know, cut down on dishes and or throwing things away. So here we start with the first of what is going to be very, very many pool pages in this album. Um, this actually was the Electric Summer Project Recipe from Creative Memories. The way they had it was supposed to be two 4x6 photos here and two 4x6 photos here. But I loved it. It was just these kind of big color block sections with the flip-flops punched out of it. And so I was able to, tr to trim my photos, crop them down to work the way I needed them to work. Um, and I love being able to take a project recipe and adapt it for my needs. This title is from Miss Kate Cuttables. One of the things that was nice about buying SVG titles as opposed to a pre-made title is that I was able to use the colors that coordinated exactly with my layout. Um, if I had purchased this, or if you look at Miss Kate's website, I think she had like blue and green or something, yellow, and those weren't the colors I wanted. I wanted to do my own. So that was a Miss Kate. And I do have some of like the CM stickers and things on here, but this is the actual project recipe. So then the next few pictures are also of us in the pool. And I just copied kind of the idea of that, that first project recipe that has these kind of big panels 
with the flip-flops cut out of it out of the Electric Summer. Um, and so you'll just see that for the next few pages. I, I did these panels, um, punched the flip-flops, put a contrasting paper behind them. I did find this little splat, probably for Miss Kate, and I used it for a little bit of journaling on the splats. But you see it just kind of ties together with these um, these big panels. I trimmed the photo here off the top. I just really love the way that it um, it ties everything together. You know, you can tell, oh, we're still in the pool. We're still in the pool. Um, and then this is also for Miss Kate. And I actually love this picture of myself. I, I It's been a long time since I've been able to say that about a photo of me in a swimsuit. But there it is. And so it kind of got prime, prime space on the last of this section of pool pages. I think this is from the sun. No, this is from Citrus Summer. This was the 2019 summer collection, and it just had this cute paper with the water and then the little um, beach umbrellas and towels, and I just trimmed it to a couple pieces to use as border and then put it on a white background. I did create this title myself. I purchased the uh, lemonade cup from Miss Kate Cuttables, but then I layered it all together with you know, a font for my computer. And it was a ton of work, you guys. I love the way it turned out, but I don't know that I would recommend doing this because it's a lot of work, <laughs> but very fun. It's, this is like 11 layers um, with all the lemons and all that stuff. But I really do love the stuff from Miss Kate Cuttables. They're like 50 cents each, but you do have to do the work yourself. So the next few pages are... Um, about the lake, the boat that we were out on the lake. I think this might actually be a project recipe from Citrus Summer. I should have looked that up. Um, Citrus Summer, which was 2019, and that's what this paper is. Um, this border maker cartridge is called the Bridge Border Maker Cartridge. Yeah, maybe this was from 2020 and Electric Summer was from 2019. I can't quite remember. Um, but so although this is called Bridge, I feel like it looks watery. I mean, I think you can also see how it's a bridge but it's multi-purpose and I love being able to use that. I did put a contrasting paper behind it. So it's actually this little polka dot, it's white with little red polka dots. And I put that behind just the water, just I, I like the look of that. So the yellow chevron and the little wave, and then this is dark sea green cardstock. And this is one of the titles that I purchased from Just Add Photos that kind of caused me to then have to make fancy titles for the whole book. So again, I kind of followed the same um, basic idea. I mean, you can see the same technique, the same waves, but not really the same layout, um, just based on the photos that I had. But I love to have layouts when I have multiple layouts of the same event. Um, I love to have them tied together. And then I also just did the journaling on one of the pages. So when you look at these first pages and you're like, Nicole, you didn't do any journaling. I promise I did. It's just back here where I had a little bit of extra space because I had all of these vertical photos. Um, this anchor is actually a funny story. I was uh, scrapbooking this in March and I had to go on, you know, the internet and find a, a anchor image to cut on my silhouette. And I thought, oh, you know, Creative Memories needs an anchor. Um, punch. And so in March, I actually wrote to CM and said, hey, we need an anchor punch. And lo and behold, in June, it showed up. Now, I know the, the way their production timeline works, that my email did not have anything to do with them being having an anchor punch. But I thought it's pretty funny that um, the timing worked out the way that it did with this little anchor border punch. And hey, my wish came true. How often can you say that that happens? So here we are back with Electric Summer. This is a the tubing page. I think that this layout was from uh, one of Creative Memories virtual crops. I know it's a sketch from the CM blog uh, because I actually used this sketch at one of my retreats for one of our overnight sketch challenges. I really like it. I think on the original one they had um, like one four by six photo here, one four by six here, nothing up here, and maybe two four by fours or something like that. But I had all these little pictures, and so I was able to just crop them down and make it work. And I love being able to get, let's see how many of this, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 pictures on one layout. And I got all the highlights, and I just was able to cut out kind of all the excess water. You don't need the water. You just need, like, the people falling off the tube and stuff like that. I think these are the stickers from Electric Summer. That's where that little diamond shape came from. 
So we have tons of pictures of us just in the kitchen, eating, hanging out. There was a huge big table. I think we'll see that on a later picture. We spent a lot of time there. And I, as I was trying to figure out what to come up with a title, I Googled, you know, food related scrapbook titles. And I got this kitchen is the heart of the home. And I thought it worked really well. So then I went with the the heart theme. And I knew I wanted to use the new Dine Border Punch. So I punched it in a platinum shimmer. And then I punched it again in white and just cut out the little plates so that I could have the silver utensils and the plates alternating. And then I put some, I don't think this is actually CM uh, paper behind it. I use several, I have several layouts that are very similar to this. And I just use kind of whatever gingham-y, tablecloth-ish looking um, paper I could get my hands on to create the layouts. But then I found this really cool um, artwork on Google Images and I was able to import it and cut it. I have no idea who designed it, who'd get credit. Um, I just found it on Google Images and I thought it worked really nicely to kind of go along with this Dine Border Punch. So I think, I'm pretty sure that the rules with Google Images are that you can use some of them in cases like this for your own use, you just can't sell them. Uh, I hope that's true. I don't I don't mean to, um, to steal from anybody. Um, anytime I can purchase artwork legally, I'm happy to do that. Um, but some artwork isn't made to be used as a as a cut file, so it's not sold in that way. So this layout is one of my favorites. Uh, it's actually based on a layout from the Creative Life Scrapbooking blog um, designed by Kara McDermott Rolfe. Let's see if that will focus for you guys. Come on, focus, little camera. Anyway, Karen, hopefully you can see that. So Karen does beautiful work. I love that she's a part of the Creative Life Scrapbooking team and she is a contributor to the CM blog. And I loved, loved the layout that she did with the birthday cake border punch, the old music notes border punch and the party time collection. And so this is absolutely and completely a, a almost direct copy of her layout. Although she, I think used a different scallop punch right here, but I had this um, this old decorative arcs punch, which was the very first border punch that new CM came out with. It sold out super fast. They've never brought it back. It is absolutely one of my favorites, and I'm glad that I was able to use it here. So after the birthday party, we went back on the boat. We only had the boat for one day of our trip, and that's why it's here at the beginning. And I did that same kind of layout that I had done for the other boat pages. If you see with the, the dark sea green and the waves and a contrasting strip, but I did it in kind of sunset colors. So instead of using the dark sea green for the waves, I used navy and I put the dark sea green behind. And instead of using yellow chevron, I used this orange that I think was from Rainbow Rush. Um, and then I found the title um, online somewhere. So now we get to a whole section of our family photos. We did these early in our reunion week. So in case that we'd had bad weather or something like that, we did not hire a professional photographer this time. We probably won't make that mistake again, um, but we at least got our picture together and we have pictures of most of the family groups. Interestingly enough, not a picture of my family group because the night that we did the pictures was the night I had signed up to cook for the family. And so as soon as the pictures were done, we all had to rush inside to you know, cook food for 40 hungry people. This layout is the picture this project recipe from CM. I followed it almost exactly the way they did it, except they had the pages reversed so that this was on this outside. Um, but for the way I did it, I liked it better the opposite way. Um, this is the camera love punch from CM. I think it's retired but I imported the image, the punched image into my silhouette so that I could print it a little, cut it out a little bit bigger as part of my title. And then you'll see with these future, all the pages that go with family photos, I used the same font, don't remember its name. Um, and I might've used, I think I used this camera a couple of times more, but this is from Picture This. And I just, I love, love how this turned out. This layout here is very interesting. As you can see, I tried to kind of go with the same feeling as the original project recipe with kind of these horizontal lines. I have this eight by 10 photo of us. And you notice I haven't done a lot of journaling in this book. I certainly don't want to have to, in every picture, 
write the name of every person. I'm usually really a stickler for journaling, but these are four volumes of the same people. And so I, I, I didn't want to have to write it every time. So I came up with what I think is a great idea. And as you look at this, it looks like I just wrote on the photo, right? But instead, what I did is I wrote on a piece of clear plastic and then I tucked it in a top loading pocket page. So you can see the picture just the way it came out originally. You can see my title with those cameras. But then if you want to see who's who, you can flip this over and their names line up right with who they are on the layout. And it's just a separate piece of plastic in here um, from another page, another uh, pocket page. I just put it on here. I wrote on it. But in order to get it positioned right, then I trimmed it off and, um, and stuck it in here. I actually think I might have used a close to my heart uh, page protector. Sometimes when I buy close to my heart stuff, they come in a kit with a couple of page protectors, but I don't use their albums. So I like to use that plastic for other things. But I don't know how this is going to hold up, how I'm going to feel over time. You know, in the past, I've done like slide out um, answer keys or whatever, who's who. But I love this one because it actually, you know, you go right to the person and it shows you who's who. So we'll see how that works out. But I was pretty proud of myself for coming up with that idea. Although it does kind of now mess up this side when you lay the layout flat. So this was using the Simple Symmetry recipe template, more of the picture of this. I love these pictures because these are pictures of my mom taking selfies of all the grandkids, and then these are the selfies that she took. And I just think they're very fun. And then here's just the posed pictures that they took. And I did modify the Simple Symmetry a little bit to make it work this way. Um, and you can see like it's not exactly the right shape, but I think it's still looks fun and looks really nice. So my husband was meanwhile going around taking selfies with his phone and I wanted to keep all of them. I mean, you know, they say only put the best pictures in and I only do. It's just, you know, too bad that they're all the best. So this one, I also put a six by 12 um, peekaboo pocket in here and you can kind of tell, I think that I attach the peekaboo pocket to this page. And what I like to do is to put the peekaboo pocket on the actual scrapbook page. You know, I use the regular CM pages with the jeeping. So I put the peekaboo pocket down first and then I put the paper over the top of it. So not only does the adhesive um, stick to the page, but then the adhesive that is sticking down this paper gives a little bit of extra reinforcement. And I hope that that will make this peekaboo pocket a little bit more secure. I always put the um, entrance on the back, I guess. I guess that's the way it works out. Um, I do, if you notice, the peekaboo pockets have a little bit of the, um, the, seal, the seam that lines up exactly with the page protectors, right? So when you stick this on, there's a little bit that pokes out right here that you will need to trim off before you can slide the page protector on over it. So just be aware of that, that you are going to have to just trim off. It's like a little half inch. It's the section that sticks down. So this continues to be picture this. Um, more of the picture this, just more of these pictures of the cousins. I just, I make these albums not just for myself, but for my extended family to take them to the reunions for everybody to look at. And I love the pictures and I love my family and I wanted to be able to put in as many as I could. This is a very simple page, just a little bit of border. I was trying to get the most out of that picture, this paper, because I think it retired while I was working on this. And so every little bit was very precious to me. So the next two layouts are probably among my favorite layouts of all time. Um, this is my daughter and then her two cousins, um, Sarah is six months younger and Clark is about a year younger. And when they were babies, and I wrote this um, in the journaling back in 2001, one of us, one of the moms had found some little baby Gap sweatshirts. They were little blue sweatshirts that said Gap on them and purchased them for all three babies. And a couple of times we tried to get a photo of them together. Um, and so this year, my sister found Gap sweatshirts again, not like for $5 and purchased them for all the kids. Uh, one of them accidentally got left at home, but luckily Sarah had a pink shirt and they, uh, there you'll see that sometimes Sarah's wearing it and sometimes Clark is wearing it. But um, I brought this picture frame and took some 
pictures with them. And then the next page, this is like one of my favorite. I do not know how to do Photoshop. I am not, you know, really good. I actually just used this in on my Mac in the Pages app, but I was able to paste in these pictures that we took. So this picture was from 2001. Clark is 10 days old in this photo. Michelle's about a year. Sarah's about six months old. And then this was um, the next year. M maybe it couldn't have been the end of the year, but Clark may might be a year. It might not have been quite as, I mean, I, she doesn't look like she's two yet in this picture, but maybe it was, a, you know, several months later. But we love these little, you know, this attempt to do these baby gap pictures. So, or, so in my 2001 scrapbook, this layout with this picture is called Gap Babies. And then this layout is called Gap Babies, the sequel. So then I used Gap Babies all grown up. And who knows if we'll ever do Gap sweatshirts again or even all be at a reunion together again. But this was a really, really fun layout to do. And I wish that I, these these were film prints and I don't even know that I have the negatives. I might have the negatives. Maybe I need to scan the negatives in and see if I can get a better quality uh, print, but I still think it turned out great. It was exactly kind of the look that I was going for. So even though it started with an empty picture frame, it turned into everything I had hoped it would be with our little gap babies, you know, all grown up 20, 18 years later. So the only one of my siblings that I did a full double page layout for is my brother's family. And that's because they, while we were taking group photos and taking some of these other photos, they were taking pictures themselves uh, just with their iPhone and they turned out so great. And I couldn't not put them in because, you know, they're great pictures and we want to preserve them. So this is the last kind of of our family portrait pictures. Uh, the house that we rented had a grand piano. We've never had a rental house with a piano before. And we love, love to sing in our family. We're all very musical. And several, uh, my sister, my mom, um, the some of the nieces and nephews play the piano very well. And it makes it so nice to be able to sit around the piano and sing together. So this is just a very simple page. Uh, if you've watched my video where I talk about how to do six and eight pointed stars, um, I created these little diamonds, um, little chevrons, and, and that's the same technique that I used. Um, so look for that video about the six and eight point stars. But I just made them into a border here and then half of one here on the other side. And this is with the All My Love um, paper, which is kind of our wedding paper uh, from 2020, but I I love, love this paper. It is so versatile and so good for so many things. All right, this, we, there was a puzzle table and we, or there was a table on some puzzles and we just ended up leaving this little side table set up with a puzzle pretty much all the time. I have lots of pi pictures of people playing with the puzzles. And so there's another layout in one of the future books. Um, and than this just random pictures. And I don't know what order they're in. They're two different puzzles. This one looks like it's almost done, but I don't care. I just wanted the puzzle pictures in here. I used the CM Puzzle Punch. Uh, this is the Fresh Fusion paper. I punched it just out of rainbow colors and tried to piece it together the best I could. The, the puzzle shapes, I don't know, they didn't really fit together as well as I would liked. And I would have liked to have them go right around the edge but that didn't work. So they went a little bit in. I just made a border. And I know that puzzling as a verb is not, does not mean putting together a puzzle, but I thought it was funny. Um, and so I did create this title myself and I imported the, the actual shape of the punch. So this is that same little puzzle punch piece. One of the things that I absolutely loved about our reunion was that we had these little baskets for each person, a little bags. We all wrote our name on them, decorated them, and left them in the sunroom. And throughout the week, uh, we left little stacks of, of paper, cardstock, and pens to write notes to each other. And I loved having, I loved seeing my notes at the end of the week. Some of the moms would put treats in there. Um, but it was just so fun. I know most of the adults made a special effort to write a note for every single one of the grandchildren. There's 25 grandchildren. Um, there weren't, there were only 24 then, and I think only 22 or 23. We have yet to have a region when everybody is there, but everybody, you know, had several little notes in there. And if somebody did something kind or 
something that you remembered about them, you could write them a little note and leave it in their bag. And we all opened up our bags on the last day and that was super fun. The layout is with the Love Wins paper and this is the Love Wins project recipe from CM. And I just did exactly the way they did it with the heart to heart chain. Um, this I think might actually still be available. I think the Love Wins paper is sold out, which is a shame because it was just very pretty. So this is more of that same paper pack that I used for the house. It's very different with the kind of this blue leopardy print stuff. Um, the house was supposed to have Wi-Fi, but it didn't really have enough Wi-Fi for as many people as had devices. I know if you know in your own home that the, the routers that we had 10 years ago that could run like your computer or a couple of computers now are struggling sometimes to keep up with computer and tablets and phones and smart TVs and, you know, all those things. So with all of us trying to get on, you couldn't get Wi-Fi in the house and you couldn't get a cell signal. We were just in a dead zone. But if you came out to the gazebo behind the house, you could get a cell signal. So here I am probably writing my mid-month CM um, email, new product email. For those of you on my email list, I was writing in this beautiful gazebo um, tethered to my phone to get a cell signal so that I could get uh, internet. And lots of times you'd catch people sitting out here because this is where the Wi-Fi signal was. Oh, look, I even wrote that, where the Wi-Fi is. <laughs> Um, we have a family book club and we we had been meeting on Zoom previous to this, but we were able to time one of our sessions to meet in person, which was really fun. And I just want to point out that this was 2018 and we were already doing Zoom. We didn't know we were trendsetters, but we were. This title is, I'm pretty sure, from Miss Kate. And again, I was able to pull out the colors that matched. This is the staycation paper. And I was able to pull out the colors that matched. I feel like this is a project recipe or a sketch or something. I don't think that this was my idea. Um, maybe it was a Noreen Smith sketch. I don't know. But I love just the simplicity of this with the little, this was a square, of course, that I then cut in half, and double matted and had a space to journal and a little place to add some. This is from the staycation um, embellishments. And then the last page, kind of out of order again. This is my, this is our friend Sasika, who lives kind of near where our vacation house was. And she came out just to visit us. She drove, I don't know, an hour or whatever, just to come say hello. And that was super fun to see her. And she's our friend from growing up in Hawaii. And so I used this kind of tropical citrus summer paper um, just to write about Sika and how she came to visit us. All right, so there is volume one. Um, I am going to go ahead and, and show the others. I'm going to stagger them a couple of days because this is already a 30 minute video and I know you guys don't want to um, have to spend two solid hours looking at my scrapbooks in one day. If you do want to spend two solid hours looking at my scrapbooks in one day, you probably want to come over and we'll sit down and, you know, have a little snack and you can sit at my table. But if you're going to look at them online, um, just give me a couple of days. I'm going to stretch these out. We are heading out of town very soon and um, I will kind of be spreading these out so that you guys don't have to miss me too much while I'm gone. All right, volume one, Smith Family Reunion 2018.